Good Thursday morning. Thank you for joining us. I want to give a call out to all of our senior adults and all those in the nursing home. I hope you are having a blessed week. Well, we're slipping down into the last part of the week, and we are looking at trustworthy statements or faithful statement, statements uh, or faithful sayings that Paul has given Timothy and Titus. Today we're going to be in 1 Timothy 4.9. It is a trustworthy or true statement, or faithful statement, deserving full acceptance. This fourth of the trustworthy statements of our faithful sayings, and it deals with spiritual exercise that comes with self-discipline. And, you know, I know self-discipline is not a big topic now. It's not a popular subject in this age. But we have to understand how important it is to have self-discipline and spiritual understanding. You see, we live in a very undisciplined society in a very undisciplined time. And Paul is telling us, and this statement is about discipline. We'll see that in a second. We have to take all scripture in context. So in order to get this one, let us do that now. We're going to read 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 9. And we'll end with the one we started with. But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself to the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is more or uh, is only of little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Now here's what it says. It is a trustworthy statement deserving all acceptance. And what he's saying is what I've just told you about discipline. Spiritual discipline is more important than body discipline. Paul could have Christians uh, be just as determined and energetic in training their inner person as some people are in training their outer person and whipping their bodies into shape. Man, we're approaching the first of the year. Thank the Lord 2020 is about over. I'm ready for it to be over. But what happens is, uh, statistics show there's going to be more people that are going to be on diets, more people that are going to be working out at the gym. In fact, I had a friend of mine say, you don't want to go to the gym three weeks after the first of the year because everybody's working out. You don't want to go to the swimming pool, indoor swimming pools, or any of those things right after the first of the year because everybody is making these commitments going into the first of the year. And Paul's saying, you need to understand something, that your spiritual exercise is just as important as your discipline in the body and getting your body into shape and, and, and dieting and eating the right things. you got to feed on the right things in the Word of God to have that kind of discipline. Listen to what it says. But having nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. He's saying, well, quit listening to the world and their fables. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And we don't want to talk about that in our day and age. You know, here's poor old Timothy out there struggling to do whatever he can to lead the church. And we talked about yesterday about, uh, about how we're all called to do things for the Lord and just as called as the preacher is. Now you've got this young preacher who Paul is saying, don't forget to discipline yourself for godliness. Spend time in the Word. Go to church. Spend time with God's people. Spend quiet time with the Lord. Discipline yourself. Quit turning on the TV and just letting stuff flow in and flow out. Stop and open the Word of God. The Word of God does not beat around the bush. When we are told that so many are feeding on worldly fables, feeding on the Word of, and not feeding on the Word of God, we all know how important the right nutrition is. And man, I'll tell you what, there are folks that are trying to get nutrition, trying to eat right, trying to do the right things. I've learned one thing. You cannot get nutrition eating fast food. We eat a lot of fast food in our society. In fact, I know uh, families that live to almost totally on fast food. And, you know, I'm not above uh, going and getting a hamburger and going and doing, uh, you know, and getting the, the fast Chinese food. In fact, one of my favorite places to go here in Denison is a fast Chinese food place. Uh, you know, and, and, but you can't live on that. And, folks, you can't live on spiritual fast food. You can't just throw up the Word of God. 
or listen to, and here's what a lot of us do, we want to listen to a gospel song on our way to work or our way to do this or our way to do that, and we think that that's what was required. No, you need to spend quality time. Set time aside just as you would in the gym, just as you would for nutritious cooking to sit and do the nutritious cooking of opening the Word of God and letting it feed your spirit. We see that the idea is not is to not go into training and Paul tells us to not be consumed with the body looks, but be consumed with the shape of our <coughs> spirits in godliness. Man, Paul is telling us that the idea is to uh, go into training, not just for the body, but for the spirit as well. And so, uh, you know, in this day and age, uh, I was watching some stuff here the other day, and I told my wife, I said, have you ever noticed that when they're trying to sell something, they never got... They never put uh, regular folks on there that are over, a little overweight and uh, don't have perfect skin. Why? Because they're trying to sell us body images. They never tell you when you, uh, uh, you know, get on, get on the TV and see these things that are being sold for uh, diets that are making you lose. They always have the before picture and the after picture. But the spokesman is not some fat person that's standing up there saying, look what this did for me. No, they got a skinny person that's saying, look what this did for me. Because body image is important to us in our society. So important that we exclude all other things in a lot of ways. What about your spiritual body image? Let us illustrate it this way. A famous violinist was asked how many hours a day uh, he practiced. The answer was a considerable number of hours. He was then asked what would happen if he stopped practicing. If I do not practice for one day, he said, I know it. If I do not practice for two days, the conductor knows it. If I do not practice for three days, everybody knows it. Likewise, if we stop exercising the spiritual person, the world will notice. But more to the point, God will, and we will rob ourselves of many blessings. There are no shortcuts to exercise onto godliness needs to be done every day, every day. Godliness is profitable both for the life on earthly plane and for the life of on the eternal plane. For bodily discipline is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance. Do you hear the word of God? Exercise your spirit today. And avoid fast food in the Word of God. Don't let somebody else regurgitate it for you. You do it yourself. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the Word. And thank you for allowing us to have the means to have a fit spirit. A spirit that is in shape for you. For we understand how important it is, Lord, and how this is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance. In Jesus' name we pray.